and welcome to Science Rocks. It's the summertime, but that doesn't mean learning stops for our Pinellas County STEM students. We are in the middle of our STEM honor summer camps all around the district, and we're not just learning in the classroom, we're also working with community members like Valpac and Pinellas County Utilities, who are hosting our students and showing them the STEM of their business. Tell us, why is it so important for students to come out here and learn about what you guys do? I think it's important for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is here in the United States, we kind of take for granted sometimes that we have fresh drinking water and safe sanitation. So I think it's important for them to understand where their wastewater goes when they flush and what happens to it. We'll dive more into our summer camps in a special upcoming edition of Science Rocks. But this show is devoted to looking at our major accomplishments throughout the year, like our fourth Two, annual one. STEM Expo. This is our fourth year at the University of South Florida St. Petersburg campus, and it's bigger and better than ever. We have 180 STEM projects from our after-school STEM academies representing all the learning that they've been doing throughout the year. Duke Energy is here with their live line service trucks giving electrifying demonstrations. Our other sponsors have students engaged with hands-on demonstrations. Our superintendent, Dr. Michael Grego, kicks things off. Dr. Grego, what are your impressions of our annual STEM Expo? Well, this is the fourth year, uh, yeah. Laura, and uh, tremendous enthusiasm and excitement in the air today. I went upstairs and took a look at the, the projects from our elementary, and middle, and, and high schools uh, that were here, and tremendous projects, tremendous problems, tremendous challenges. So this is just growing, the excitement of our parents here, our sponsors, Duke Energy, USF St. Pete, and uh, mainly also it's a celebration of what we've been doing all year in terms of the STEM academies each and every week. We're serving over 5,000 students on a weekly basis. So. And why is it so important for you to support our students in the lead to charge STEM education? Well, it's clear, as you said before, is that with these STEM academies, our students are reaching new heights in terms of their achievement in mathematics and science and their application of technology. So th th these after-school academies are, are making that impact during the day. National Geographic Explorer Andres Russo is our guest speaker, and he is a big hit with the kids. So why is it so important for you to speak to STEM students? Ultimately, you guys are the future leaders um, of the world. You don't realize it, but you really are. Now it's time to open the doors and let the kids and their teachers show off their projects. Six failures before it worked the 607th time. Wow. So, uh, Derek Freed, I teach at Fugit Elementary. I had uh, 21 fourth and fifth grade students, and we put together a Rube Goldberg project. Uh, this was completely uh, manufactured and designed by our girls. Uh, the uh, object was uh, to design um, and construct a, uh, a Rube Goldberg machine that would allow us to see many chain reactions. It was a, a very trying um, project as uh, the girls noticed that uh, the first time didn't always work. Uh, so we got to see a lot of uh, redesign, rethinking, um, a lot of good team building as well. I see the gro students growing in so many ways. Um, they've learned leadership, they've learned to work collaboratively together, um, they've learned to troubleshoot, and more importantly, they have a new excitement for science and math, technology, and engineering. So we builded the um, dancing ducks in class or STEM class and we take the computer and we start um, coding them or we do different types of codes. You, I've got two kiddos here who've been in it for two years. It has changed them. They, they publicly can speak. They have thought about how math, science, technology, engineering integrate all the time. They've, what did you guys make? Um, I made bristle bot. Bristle bot. Bristle bot. It has a closed circuit that makes the battery on, and it vibrates the cord, and it vibrates the toothbrush. And so, how did you learn how to build something like this? 
Um, so we did some research on what um, is on a bristle bot and we found out some different ways to make them bigger and that's how this was made. So you're a female in STEM. If other females want to get involved in the STEM Academy, what sort of skills do they need? Um, definitely courage because it, there are some, some hard times where you, you sometimes fail at things and you just have to have courage to keep on going. Great. So what are some of the skills that you've learned from your STEM Academy? It's mostly keep trying, never give up, and mostly just, just keep doing it, just keep doing it, never stop. What connection do you see be, between the STEM Expo and what's happening during the school day in our community? Well, it's so important for us as a, as a public education system to bring the community into the events we're doing and also into the daily instructional program. And students are being exposed and parents are being exposed to what their students are seeing each and every day. So it's that three-legged stool about our education, um, our, our curriculum, and then the community. It has to all blend together. When we come back, I'll show you how some of our high school students have been working with STEM Academy middle school students. Science Rocks rolls on in a moment. <laughs> 